Pack Open is brought to you by Astro, Monster Energy, Corsair, Pax, GG Bet, and LG Ultra Gear. Weighing in at six foot three inches and uh, roughly 220 pounds. And of course, you might know him as Quinteras Lopez Jones, coming from the small little city of Foley, Alabama, and also at the ripe old age of 29. He was no joke in high school, and now he's even better. You might know him as Julio, actually. And these guys, well, they're taking on the Cowboys today. Why, we're going to be taking a look at who's going from the semis onto the grand finals. We're kicking off this day with a banger. And first and foremost, I want to take this time to thank the people that all make this very much possible. And Astro Corsair, Monster Energy Hacks, and the New Belgium Brewing Company. Now, welcome back to the DreamHack Open Atlanta. My goodness, guys. It's been a long night, dare I say. Nothing mischievous and no substances involved. I actually think I'm on the cusp of having food allergies, so it's kind of like strange, you know? So you're like a tipping time bomb up there. Yeah, I feel like uh, today is one of those that's going to have me on the edge a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Either way, yes, we do have dust. We do have Bach. And guys, sorry for the rough intro there. but That's uh, okay. That was great. It's great. Strange. It adds you know to your, you your yeah, character. It adds to what? Your character. Oh, well, I mean, it definitely does something. I'll give you that. Guys, we've had an action-packed weekend so far. In fact, uh, beginning right from the very top, we can start to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that you've seen. Just big picture, anything that sticks out right over the top. Yeah, I mean, I think big picture, we pretty much got all the teams we expected to in the playoffs. I think maybe the only one you could have debated was like E-United maybe getting in over Luminosity. Yeah. But I think that we obviously expected Complexity and Ghost to make it through and we were hoping Vitality would show up and they actually did yesterday. So I think we're about where we thought we would be. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we could have seen that United series swing either direction. LG actually looked really good yesterday when they played. Um, you know, we saw big performances from Nekiz and Henny as well. Steel really stepped up for them. So, I mean, coming into their matchup today, that's what we're going to need to see continue because really that's what we haven't seen from them. Well, what we haven't seen enough of is talking about Movember. That's right. You see, my, my hair's a little blonde still because one of the stretch goals there was to dye my hair or, I guess, uh, get highlights. So... Yes, we did reach that stretch goal, and it's all for CS Mo. Movember is a contribution and a, 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 a it's just an awareness, of course, an annual event, where in which we start to talk about that, uh, which are problems of mental health within men and physical health within men. So, of course, we could probably dive into that one a little bit further, but who's going to explain it better than me? It would probably be this video. Let's check it out. In the month of November, dedicated to raising awareness of men's health issues such as prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and men's suicide. Those are all Bible thump issues in my mind. And if you take a look at this graph here, you'll see that we're almost to the tipping point where Anders Bloom, yes, that's right, the Anders, uh, why are you kidding me? That guy will have to shave his beard. Guys, thoughts on that alone? I mean, I would just love to see his naked cheeks. Just no hair and then a beautiful bushy mustache. You I, saw, I think you pull off the mustache quite so well. So nothing also has to shave into a mo, and you should have saw his girlfriend's tweet. I did see that. <laughs> that yeah, was, that was uh, uh, that, that was, was an interesting. interesting one, to say the least. Yeah, that was a very, very interesting one. Shout out, Truth. You definitely highlighted the evening there when I read that. Was not expecting it whatsoever. Uh, however, yes, we did have an entire day of matches yesterday. These are three-day events, and that would mean day number two. We have to send some teams home, which makes it an elimination day. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what yesterday gave us. They can still go for force by if they lose this, but Apex coming in to clean this. No immediate refrag. That means that Apex is going to get the chance. He's going to get the spray correction as well onto Dragonfly. 
Apex just completely destroys the Marshall. Have seen Envy read into this, but a pressure it long, and it's gonna be Stadium with a quick pick and a follow-up to take down Steel, who in the process managed to take out Cutler for the time being, has left JDM alone on this side. He's got immediate support coming back in from Nifty. Like, don't even need it, though, as he's taking these guys out one by one. Oh, Penny as well, taking quite a bit of damage, so not the best start for Luminosity here. Nick is coming down into mid after taking an initial one. Try to have a refract potential, but the second player just didn't manage to do anything. Now Nick is in a 1v1, though. This can definitely happen. He's got position on Poyo. He's going to try to shift around a little bit here, but Nick makes the push. Has some down low and is going to be able to take him out. As well. He's going to get barreling in with these pistols we'll trying to find something. Sadly, his confidence for they need this aggression. MSL, he's certainly exuding that now as he picks up absolutely everybody. MSL. And yes, as this play started to pack out yesterday, we had a few vocal fans that helped us to get to what is the playoff day. And actually, I think three of those guys got booted out for being just a little too much, dare I say. I think harassing a players while they're playing is a little bit stepping over the boundaries under the confines of this event. I don't know. I could be wrong. But those guys, they had to go. Either way, yes, the playoff stage is set. And we're going to have our first match of Luminosity versus Ghost Gaming. Both of these teams having battled a very long battle. I guess, you know, LG more than Ghost, but... What will you do with it, right? Yeah, it's kind of kind of short for Ghost, I guess. A couple of best of one victories, made it over. Uh, had a day off, obviously, to kind of focus up on what's next. And uh, you know, Luminosity, we're able to make it through. Finally, get into another playoffs. But uh, I, I think it's as easy as having a couple reasons, maybe even three of them to be exact. Brought to you by Hacks GG, Dust Moret. Walk us in. Yeah, just to kind of set the tone here, we're going to go with it right away. Ghosts are heading to the finals, and here's three reasons why. First of all, I think they are going to match just fine with Luminosity when it comes to firepower. Look, I was impressed by Steel really stepping up, Neck is really stepping up. Guys you don't normally expect to frag really well have been this tournament alongside someone like Henny, who you do expect. They're, they're definitely getting a lot out of their lineup, but you have Wardell sitting over there on Ghost, and he has been an absolute monster with the AWP. Steel's probably one of the best fragging in game leaders in NA, and really all the players so far have set up throughout this tournament, particularly Neptune. The new guys have definitely been playing really well. So I think they're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Luminosity when it comes to the skill. Then at number two, since they're going to match them in skill, the thing that's going to tip them over the edge, I think, is going to be better structure. Look, I think Steel has done a fantastic job with this team. You know, really nice set tactics on these maps, really good utility usage. They're really good at every stage of the round to get a little pieces of map control, get little advantages, and work them into the late round. So I really like to see that. Meanwhile, we have Yell, the new end game leader for Luminosity, running a much looser system, which doesn't seem like it's going to be very reliable. It seems like it's dependent upon momentum and individual plays. So I think what Steel's doing with Ghost is, again, something that's going to be a little bit more consistent. And then our final reason is their head-to-head -head history is favoring Ghost right now. They played each other a couple of times in the EPL, and Ghost was able to secure both of those victories. And just in general, Ghost has looked a little bit sharper over the last few months than Luminosity. So when you combine all that together, I think Ghost is going to be moving on to the finals. Easily said, easily done, and that was done and dusted by Dust Moret. Check it out. You can uh, get that book in Barnes & Noble's around you. I feel like I should have trademarked that expression by now. I feel like you should get used to so your much. podcast. Yeah. That's like that a was, thing for you. I'll be. have the box office. You can have done and dusted. It's done a box there, there might be okay, something there. Yeah, yeah, you see, see, see what I did there? A, yeah. Took a few seconds, but you know what? We're, we're all here this morning, and just like we're all here, so are these vetoes. This is a best of three, and then, yes, it's only one of those. There's no lower bracket from here. You play to win the whole tournament at this point, and it's going to be Ghost and Luminosity, so we got to figure out what maps they're going to be playing on, guys. So one of the interesting things that I've at least seen with uh, James IRL, who's the coach of Ghost in the past, is that he likes to come into a series and kind of throw out an unpredictable curveball at times. I don't think this is where we're going to see that, no. but he could. Uh, probably going to be an overpass and nuke ban right off the bat. I don't think that Ghost wants to play Luminosity on overpass, and I don't think Luminosity wants to play nuke at all. Yep. So those should be the first two. Then we could probably see Inferno come out, maybe train Here's for LG. the thing. I mean, Luminosity has played four different maps throughout this tournament so far. They've only played Dust 2 twice, and they've also played overpass and Inferno and Mirage each one time. And I think their map pool coming into the tournament was in shambles. Like, they had losing streaks on four out of the seven maps, so it was really hard to know exactly which direction they might want to go, to be perfectly honest with you. So that, that is where the picking makes it a little bit hard for me. If I'm Ghost, I think maybe you can go with a strength like Train. You might also go for Inferno, a map that they're very comfortable playing. I think those are some of the maps they've played the most since Neptune has joined. So if they want to go at personal comfort, I think that's where you could go. And I think that either one would be fine against Luminosity team, who I think has kind of an ailing map pool right now. Yeah, I mean, Train, though, is definitely one that could help them a little bit. LG has had a decent success on Train, mm -hmm. so I could see either team really picking it, because I think both teams have a decent overlap on those two maps. Um, 
It is a little bit hard, though, because of LG's lack of success in the last couple of months in online and LAN tournaments. But there's the bans coming out, exactly what we thought we'd yeah. see. Uh, Nuke and Overpass. Yep. So that's not really too much I mean, of the surprise. biggest weaknesses for Luminosity are actually probably Cash and uh, Mirage, Mirage, to be 100% yeah. honest with you. So if Ghost wants to go for a weakness of Luminosity, they could do that. But again, if they want to play to their comfort zone, I think that's like more Train Inferno. Talk about a comfort zone in this matchup alone would be having two steals in the server. That is going to be nice and confusing. Steal, kill, steal. Love ah, to see it. You so, love to see it. Let's bring in those picks. It's going to be trade first, followed by Dust. Two, that is. Sorry. I mean, the, dust, easy, two, really. the dust two pick isn't terribly surprising, no. but the train pick is kind of right where we thought it would be. I kind of picked LG to take train right off the bat. It is one of their stronger maps. I feel like if Henny goes off, that all presence could be a big problem. But at the same point in time, you have more than one op on, on Ghost. You have actually potentially three. Steel's always considered himself a hybrid player, probably one of the better hybrid players, especially, especially when acting as an IGL. And then you have Kusta, who used to be a primary op and was actually really good as a primary op, despite his runs with Liquid and CLG, where maybe yeah. you kind of saw some... I don't like this at all, by the way. Well. I think picking train into Ghost is a really bad idea for Luminosity. Maybe they're comfortable with it, but we haven't really even seen them play it this tournament, and Ghost has been so good on train online, and even has some success in the offline environment as well, so I think that they didn't really gain much of an edge there. And we're going to wind up an Inferno as a third map, which is kind of like the old classic third map, it feels like. If someone doesn't pick it, it seems like it does eventually make its way through to the end. So, yeah, I mean, I think the stage is set for, for Ghost to look really sharp in this. I mean, they get to play Dust 2, a map that they're comfortable with, and they, they get to play against Train. They're, they're happy with that. They're totally fine with Luminosity picking Train. I so mean, this, this actually does kind of end up where I thought it would. I just thought they would have picked Inferno, and Dust 2 would have been the random decider. But mm -hmm. either way, this map, I, this map pool does play to Ghost. Which is kind of cool to hear, but also you want to have a competitive semifinal. You want to see this path being tested. And actually, both these teams being tested just like they have up to this point. And we're going to get to hear more from them directly as we got a uh, chance to catch up with them yesterday going into today's semifinal. <laughs> I guess this is like the first pretty big tournament I've been to with this team. So it feels pretty nice and uh, the whole team's feeling pretty good. And I think when we come into the next games, we're still going to be confident because I feel like we're still good in best of threes. And now Kusta chimes on in. Still two plays here. Oh, they go into it. Kusta's going to go ahead of final three. And we're all pretty confident and experienced and no one really gets lost in the moment. Take control over short, use the smoke and the flashes to get into the what's inside, but Megas is on fire. Three quick headshots from him. Henny and Megas just locking it down. Shroud Henny gonna spot the man out in connector, takes the fight with the M4, is able to win it, and Ali know the whereabouts of that. We're really like really great. Everybody on our team wants to win really, really bad. I am in game leading now uh, since Chicago. And I had no much, not much time to to do what I want with the team. But every, everybody's working hard, and we're we're trying to to prove ourselves again. Uh, right now, I feel pretty comfortable with them, and we're starting to mesh a bit well. I think after like a three-month period, it'll be really set. And uh, we've only been a team for like a month and a half now, so overall, it's starting to get. I'm getting a bit more comfortable, and we're starting to have more chemistry together. We play like with no fear, we play like doing whatever comes to our minds because we know that we have good players. So if Henny or Lucas or anyone wants to do something, I'll, I'll let them do anything because if we're hyped, anything can happen, you know? Ghost Gaming have found their way into the semifinals here. They've been on quite the impressive run, especially considering what they've done there in the EPL, qualifying for the finals in Udensa with a quickness, actually. And in fact, as we take a look at this Ghost lineup, it's hard not to mention the types of Wardell and even the leadership qualities that Steel has. No, what a redemption story for Steel, right? I mean, obviously what he went through and now he's been able to bring a team up to the top of the North American region, placing second in the EPL. He's even been able to get more out of players that are either inexperienced or players who have struggled on past teams like Acousta or an inexperienced player like a Neptune. It seems like he's really directing this team well. They are looking really sharp. I think the big thing that 
they're missing right now and what they're hunting for in this tournament is a deep run at a land tournament. I mean, they got some maps off of NIP and Navi over at DreamHack Masters Stockholm. That was nice. Again, they're dominating pretty well in an online league play. But, you know, they really struggled at CS Summit 3. I feel like they wanted to go a little bit further there. They, Again, they just don't have that title yet. They don't have that deep run yet. I think that's what they're, you know, need to get at an event like this. But even on the heels of Stockholm, they went on to change lineups, right? So they, uh, I think they had Crystal at the time. He right. goes away. And then, you know, they bring in Neptune, which uh, in terms of Neptune, I guess, what do we know? I mean, he's a young fragger. He had a chance way back when with the old Bees Money Crew roster, and which eventually became Ghost Gaming. He had some weird issues with his age, so he didn't remember how old he was, or he was just flat out lying because he wanted to play Pro League and was trying to fudge the numbers. I think in general, this team looking at them is kind of a redemption story for everyone across the board. Uh, you know, Sabroza had his chance with CLG and it didn't really go that well. Uh, Kusta had his chance with CLG, didn't really go that well. Liquid was even worse. Uh, at least with CLG, he found some consistency. He was with the team a whole lot longer. Uh, Wardell, he's been playing with this team for a long time, but he's been pretty mediocre, to be perfectly honest. You would see him get inside of his own head at a lot of LAN events. He's finally hit this really consistent point, and then obviously who have Steel, who's calling the shots with James behind him. I think it's actually a piece that we don't really talk about enough well, is the amount of work that James puts in for the team. Well, even, well, yeah, of course, James is one thing, but you talk about redemption stories from the side of Counter Logic Gaming. I mean, hell, even Steel had a little bit of one there, did he not? I, maybe off the record. Off the, off the record, maybe. Off the record. Off the record. Uh, off the record and on to the next. It's going to be Luminosity. That's Luminosity Gaming, not to be confused with that ninja guy. We play real esports over here. And wow. wow. Of course, that's going to be Neca Steel, Yell, Henny, Want, or Henny, and Lucas. Yeah, I mean, again, this team finally makes it out of the group stage, right? Outside of Valencia for the last year and a half, this team had group stage exit after group stage exit. It's great to see them in the playoffs again. The problem is, though, is that even with that, they, you know, didn't have the hardest path here, if we're honest. You know, whenever they played the, against Envy, that was a team they were expected to beat. You know, beating United was good, but we know what the struggles of United are going through. You know, just bringing in Finesse, not having a lot of time for him to really implement his system. Don't even have their full starting five yet. Still waiting for Cooper to make his way in for who knows. So I think that Luminosity still has a lot to prove to me. I am happy to see that Steel seems to be thriving in kind of more of an entry fragger position. It was really odd for him because his entire history has been more of like kind of a lurk player. It seems like Nekis is playing a lot better in a more loose system because I feel like he was a guy that was trying to put up numbers and he's doing just fine, kind of rotating the off with Yell and at times also just being kind of like a rifler, which he's always been able to do pretty well. But again, I, I still haven't seen enough to be super confident in Luminosity. I do feel like the fact that Yell's a new in-game leader, that they're playing a much looser system, that that's not going to be as reliable. They're going to have to get big plays out of guys like Henny or, or, or Steel. And again, I just don't know if that's going to be consistent. Whereas I feel like the structure's over there for Ghost. They know exactly what they want to do. They have it a proper game plan. So again, you're going to have to just see some big individual performances out of these players you're seeing on screen in order to be kind of able to contest against that. I think the issue is when you go pound for pound between the two teams, I think you could line everyone up and I would give Ghost a slight advantage. I think that Wardell's been more consistent with his op than Henny has. That said, I think maybe Henny is a little bit better with a rifle. Wardell is not a rifler. If he gets a rifle in his hand, it usually does not go very well. Mm -hmm. But at the same point in time, I think Steel against Steel. I think Ghost Steel does a little bit better. That's going to be a really fun one to try and talk about. Um, and I think their secondary op presence is better. I think Yell has been good in the past, but he's been a little bit weaker. And here you can see the head-to-head -head between the two steals. Hopefully the stats are, are right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an interesting combination. I mean, obviously Steel's played more matches than uh, the Steel over on Luminosity has played matches than Steel over on Ghost. That's why the numbers kind of look that way. But, you know, Josh Nastan over there for Ghost, you know, in-game leader, kind of an entry fragger. Luminosity Steel used to be an in-game leader and has become an entry fragger for Luminosity, at least on a lot of their tactics. So kind of an interesting dynamic there. And obviously uh, it's always going to be fun to, to see Steel versus Steel and all the confusion it brings. Well, with these statistics, let's go ahead and keep in mind that LG have had a longer road yep. here. So, it, yes, it might look like, wow, that steal's better than that steal. I'm not going to say which one, but what I'm saying is one has played more games. And you can play along in our little game by getting involved in the Twitch chat using exclamation point GG for Ghost or exclamation point LG for Luminosity. That's right. Light that chat up, ladies and gentlemen, because we need to know where you sit and stand or both. I don't think you can do both of those at the same time. But where you stand on these teams and who's going to be winning. James RL preparing for the day after tomorrow. 
Um, looks like he's a little chilly over there. I mean, he, what I love about what James brings to the team is James was here all day yesterday watching demos in the back. So while other teams were maybe sitting back at their hotel, relaxing, maybe seeing the city, James is here. The rest of his team might be doing something else. And he's here watching demos, not only the teams they're going to play, but themselves. He's like, okay, yep. one of us struggled on this map. Let's figure out why. And he watches the whole demo from that player's perspective, and he takes notes so he can take it to the player and help them improve. I think the dichotomy between them is perfect because you basically have Steel who kind of drills in the flow chart. Like, this is how we want to react to this situation. Here's how we should handle this situation. He stages the round up. Like, we want to use a couple flashbangs and a Molotov here to clear this one guy out get a kill, maybe get a five on four, get this small piece of map control, and then let's play from that. So he's really good at kind of the tactical side, staging the round, you know, just developing it into the mid and late round. And then you have a guy like James IRL, who, like you said, is gonna be able to get on the demos. Maybe he's gonna be able to read a tendency that their opponent has, that maybe they can exploit. Maybe a certain piece of their flow chart happens to line up really well with something their opponent likes to do, so maybe they're gonna go to that a little bit more than they normally would. Or like you said, maybe just give that extra perspective to steal like, hey man, I was watching our game, noticed that we could tidy this up a little bit. So it's great to kind of have that support system, and uh, I think that it's perfect how they've kind of split up the responsibilities. Plus, he makes a dad hat look good. Dare I say, James IRL, also known as Marcus, also known as, I, I don't know, what did you guys he's, got any for him? He's a beautiful man. Yeah, he's, he's just a pretty just cool really, dude to be around. Very hype man. guy. I had the privilege of working with him over at Pro League, and I do know him through Jordan Nothing Gilbert. They grew up together, believe it or not. They, uh, well, I say grew up together. They hung out together in San Diego. I recall one time going down there and eating burritos, all the three of us, before James, I think, really got into Counter-Strike to where he is now. Uh, but it's a really cool story, right? Because he does bring that element of, of in intensity to the table, dare I say, within this lineup. But guys, as we do see these teams huddled around, getting ready to get in the server and LO3 it, I'm going to have to liven it up here on the desk by asking you guys where you're starting to stand. I mean, I think it's a ghost to zero. I mean, I mean, I, I put the three reasons out there at the very top of the show. I don't think the map pool really swayed me at all. If anything, I kind of solidified my opinion because I think that a train pick from Luminosity is totally playing into the hands of Ghost. I think they're totally fine with that. Again, I think that they can match with them in Firepower. I think their strategy is better because it's more reliable. It's not loose. It's structured. They know exactly what they want to do and how to adjust. So, yeah, I think that Ghosts have just looked sharper overall the last few months and in this tournament, and I think they're going to 2-0 the series. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to agree. I think that this is... A series that maybe we could have seen go three maps if the map pool was right, but even still, right. that was a stretch. I think that this is an easy 2-0 for Ghost, probably the easier path to the finals when you compare it to the other semifinal game. Well, there's a reason that Ghost had that day off. They did earn that. You know, they, they have birthed themselves into the semifinal uh, early on within the tournament for a reason. Uh, and while I did pass Luminosity as I left the hotel this morning, and they were looking extra sprightly, Steel smiling. I, you wouldn't believe it. I saw Steel smile. It was the craziest thing in the world. Not going to clarify which deal, but they were smiling. I'm going to have to go with Ghost, man. 100%. There's just no way around that. Uh, unless Henny shows up like he did big time yesterday. That's a, a scary X factor that I don't think you can always rely on within Luminosity. See, I think it's not even just Henny, though. You also need Nekas. You also need Steel. You right. also need everyone because the reality is even if Henny shows up and neutralizes Wardell, there's other options for Ghost that sure. I think are just as threatening as Wardell is. So, uh, like, we saw their games yesterday. Nekas, who is one of the last remaining holdouts from the move-up that saw some guys from Pain Gaming join the team, mm -hmm. uh, he's the one that really surprised me yesterday because he had a great performance. Like, yeah, Henny, we kind of expect Tendy to have really big right. games. We don't really expect Nekas to go off like he did. So it's going to be really key for them. If they were going to even take a map, they're going to need Nekas to step up, and yep. they're going to need Steel to be playing on the same level as yesterday. That's LG Steel, not Ghost Steel. Well, let's check, uh, check in with our Twitch fellows now. I know you, I've asked you guys to light the chat up. I've asked you to spam away. And now are the results. It looks like a favoring of Bluminosity. Now, I'm going to have to say probably some of that rides simply on the namesake. Oh, certainly. I mean, the Brazilian fame base always shows up uh, and supports their team, so not surprised they're on the vote. I mean, listen here, though, guys. You got Ghost, who's number two in the EPL, dominating all the top teams. Luminosity demoted to Mountain Dew League, right? And just a slew of really rough results. Ghost definitely has on the upper trajectory, so you guys need to get that chat in the upper trajectory towards Ghost. Just well, saying. And just like the chat, I'm going to have to ask chat right in this moment to hit Control-T. Everybody, this moment, hit Control-T. That's the little one, and then the other little one. Type dreamhack.com slash Digital Pass. That's right, Snipe. Keeping all the content live and unlocked and unloaded over there with a multi-view pass. You might want to go check them out, or dare I say, since you already opened that other browser, you're already there. It's weird how that works. Let's go ahead and bring in the commentators because it's time to get into this best of three. This semi-final between Ghost and Luminosity is set to square off, and we're starting on train to do that. It's going to be Blue and Risk. Guys, good morning. Blue, looking like you're going to a job interview. Love it. It's a fantastic thing.